Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. How y'all doing? It's Kaiser. It's great to see y'all. Yes, I took a little bit of a hiatus. There was not a lot of news going on last week, but decided to go ahead and take a little bit of time, relax, recharge the old batteries, because trust me, once the summer movie season gets here, it's going to be a bumpy ride. But I'll tell you, somebody else who's been having a bumpy ride right now is Disney and Star Wars. Because, frankly, folks, I'm just going to come out and say it. Star Wars is a dead franchise. I, I know that's going to be a shock to some people. But, uh, you know, I'm telling you, Star Wars is an absolutely dead franchise. And I can already hear a lot of the shills out there right now and trying to sit there and, you know, color me as some kind of a grifter. But, you know, I mean, all I can hear out there is here we go again. Oh, but it's so much worse this time, folks, because I can tell you, it's not me saying it. It's Forbes. Um, Yeah. Forbes has come out with this absolutely scathing article, literally rebuking all of the, <laughs> the supposed grifter shills and whatnot, wanting to sit, or the grifters wanting to sit there and... Uh, decry all of the bad things that have been happening at uh, Disney and Star Wars. Well, let's actually get into it because I can tell you, according to this, it's not what you think. And let's just get here. So box office profits generated by Star Wars movies, the Disney Star Wars movies, have fallen $2.8 billion short of covering the media giant's purchase of the sci-fi saga's creator, Lucasfilm, according to an analysis of recently filed financial statements. Son of a oh, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, let's just buckle in because this is going to get rough. Disney bought Lucasfilm for $4 billion in 2012. wonder what that is adjusted for inflation. And soon gave the green light to a new trilogy of Star Wars movies, which teamed up the rising stars Daisy Ridley and John Boyega with Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, and the late Carrie Fisher, who headlined the original movies for more than 30 years earlier. See, so all the stars aligned when The Force Awakens, the first film in the new series, was released in 2015. According to industry analyst Box Office Mojo, it grossed a staggering $2.1 billion, causing Disney to commission two spinoff movies as well as two sequels that were already planned. However, as the series continued, there was a disturbance in the force due to an over-reliance on computer-generated effects and a lack of gritty, quirky characters who make the Star Wars original movies smash hits. That is absolutely 100% correct. Over-reliance on CG completely undershooting any kind of use of practical effects, bad characters, lazy character writing. Um, I'm just going to flat out say it. Ray is a Mary Sue and uh, you cannot change my mind on it. Just saying. Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's been a wild little ride there, but yeah, again, just backing up to this part right here where it literally tells you that, Disney Star Wars movies have fallen $2.8 billion short of covering the media giant's purchase of the sci-fi saga's creator, Lucasfilm. Now, let me, let's back up there. Let's, let's take a little quick detour. I want to make sure we get this 100% understood. The acquisition, the $4 billion, was not just Star Wars. $4 billion bought... All of Lucasfilm. That includes Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Willow, um, you know, ILM, all of the properties that Lucasfilm owns. Literally everything that was Lucasfilm fell underneath that $4 billion that was purchased by Disney. So what you're trying to sit there and do there is you're trying to fi figure out a valuation of, okay, uh, if that's the case, then how much did they really buy Star Wars for? Well, I mean, that's kind of a moot point at this moment because Star Wars was what Disney wanted. Star Wars was the jewel in their crown they wanted so badly. 
because they knew that Star Wars, as far as the fans were concerned, the fans at the time, back in 2014, 2015, were hankering for some good old fashioned Star Wars, the what the what they had always loved. And you know, we at the time were thinking maybe we could just look back at the prequels as those kind of crappy ones. Boy, howdy, were we wrong. We were now looking back at the prequels with a little bit more reverent eyes going, yeah, they suck, but it's not the Disney sequel trilogy. <laughs> it's, it's the sad truth of the matter, folks. So yeah, $4 billion and... Basically, with your when you're actually accounting for the profits made off of all of the Star Wars movies versus their production budgets versus how much they made, yeah, they made bank like as far as like total revenue coming in. But you're talking about having to account for marketing, production, all of that stuff that they also have to do in the meantime. So, you know, theoretically speaking, I mean, if you have a is like a movie budget. Let's actually look at some of the information here. So this is actually the breakdown of the Star Wars, Disney Star Wars movies, starting with Force, Force Awakens down here. Production budget, $306 million. Made $2.064 billion. So $2 billion at the box office. Now you have to take that number, and you also have to do 2 to 2.5. Sometimes if it's a really uh, very marketed film, three times the budget. So if you really think about it, probably I would say that, I mean, I'm just spitballing here, that uh, your actual <laughs> budget for this movie, like at once you included production and marketing and ever advertising all in, that probably ended up being close to eight, nine hundred million dollars right there wrapped up in that movie, just with all of that together that it needed to just to break even. And then it makes two billion dollars. Yeah. So it makes some money back. And then they go ahead and use that money to go ahead and do Rogue One and then Green Light Star Wars Episode 8 and 9 and do Solo. Well, Solo lost a ton of money. And there's a, been a very made after Episode 8. And episode 8 is widely regarded as the worst of the Disney sequel trilogy. And then you notice a very marked decline and the quality and everything of everything after that. So, but let's just get back to the article. And yeah, we're, they're going to cover a lot of the same things, but I wanted to make sure we get this full context. So in 2019, Rise of Skywalker, the third installment of the new trilogy, hauled in about half as much at the box office as The Force Awakens, though the series soon had a renaissance. Nah, really. So they're trying to go ahead and say, that, well, okay, well, then they came out with The Mandalorian. Don't get me wrong, The Mandalorian did good for two seasons, and then it fell off a fucking cliff. <laughs> so going back to The Mandalorian saying, you know, the asking questions about season four they're saying the only reason the fourth season of the mandalorian hasn't gone into production yet is that the movie based on its two stars is due to release in 2026 so mando season four is basically not happening in a tv series format as far as we know it seems like mandalorian season four is going to be the mandalorian movie as far as we can tell right now, there's some conflicting information on that. And of course, you know, we'll know closer to the due date, like what's going to end up happening. But I mean, again, if you look at Star Wars on TV, you had, you know, the second season, the first two seasons of Mandalorian, which were great. And then came along with Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan did okay for a bit, but it was a disaster. It's kind of widely regarded as a piece of garbage. Now, then you also ended up, with um ahsoka ahsoka was terrible um they came out with andor and while everything that i have been able to find and whatnot points to and you know that i've seen the andor is actually really good but it just nobody watched it nobody cared to watch it and so it lost money so all these series they're pumping money into are losing money. The movies are getting are an absolute decline. So when you're actually account, accounting for how much money has been made on these franchises, and like as far as you know these movies that Star Wars franchise is concerned, it's not looking go so good. 
Last month, Disney released a 67-page presentation singing the praises of Chief Executive Bob Iger. Yeah, imagine that. In a bid to convince stockholders to side with him in the active battle with activist investors. I wonder how many of those investors are having some serious buyer's remorse right now. One of its key boasts was that was about the supposedly spellbinding return on investment generated by the franchise that Disney acquired under Iger. The presentation gives the impression that Disney Star Wars trilogy generated 2.9 times return on the purchase of Lucasfilm as that figure is presented next to the, a timeline of key events in the production of the com production company's history. They include the release of Disney movies and acquisition of Lucasfilm, which was the only milestone marked with a star adding that this impression was that the is the fact that the other end of the timeline is the star wars logo and the photo of the mandalorian with his little green friend however buried in the fine print is the revelation that <laughs> the purchase price of lucasfilm doesn't even include the return on investment calculation instead it's purely based on the box office performance of Disney Star Wars trilogy, it's two spinoff movies, merchandise, DVD, and Blu-ray sales. So if you go by just how much money in total that uh those you know movies, TV shows, all of that stuff made, then it's yeah, they're saying 2.9 times the amount that they paid for the series. I mean, that's a lot of money. That's uh several billion dollars. But here's the kicker, though. They don't mention at all return on investment calculation. So they're asking, wait a minute, you're talking about just how much those money, money those brought in. Did you account for how much you spent to put those out in the first place? Mm. Suddenly, something is not looking quite so uh, sparkling there. Yes, I can definitely smell shite. Yeah. As revealed, the methodology is questionable as Disney based the ROI, return on investment, on the revenue generated by the movies, merchandise, blue DVD, and Blu-rays rather than the profit they made as they should have done. Using the revenue rather than the profit artificially inflates the result as it doesn't factor in the cost that Disney had to pay out. Bam. Forbes nails it right there. This is not me saying this. This is Forbes, the preeminent financial newspaper out there, flat out just slapping this down and showing you that, uh, yeah, Disney is get, is feeding you a line of BS. No offense, but it sounds like some fucking commie gobbledygook. Just being honest with you. Say so analysis of more than 800 pages of company filings has revealed that the cost of making Disney's five Star Wars movies hit a total of $2.1 billion, peaking at $567.3 million on The Force Awakens. However, that's just the start. Mindful of its blockbuster budget, Disney devised an ingenious way to make money back on the movie. Instead of shooting in the United States, it chose Pinewood Studios in the U.K., where the original trilogy of films was made. This enabled it to benefit from the UK government's audiovisual expenditure credit, which gives studios a cash reimbursement up to 25.5% of the money they spend in the UK, provided that it represents at least 10% of the film's total costs. So as long as they shot a lot of the movie in the UK, they get this UK tax break to help kind of uh, offset the costs. Look, tax breaks, movies, that's nothing new. They do it all the time. I mean, we've literally had movies where they put the movie out knowing it's going to flop and they use it as a tax write-off. This is nothing new. But, I mean, this is saying that just the production of, you know, being in the UK, you get a little bit back on that. So, I mean, when you're getting down to it, I mean, how much are you really saving here? I mean, it's don't get me wrong. It's a lot of money, but at the same time, it's still not a seriously re return on investment. So where does that trickle down to? Because that trickles down 
to the theaters specifically. And just going back to the article here, theater chains typically get around half of the takings when the remain with the remainder of going to the studios, deducting the 475.1 million net cost of the Force Awakens. That's 475 million after the UK tax break. From Disney's share, the box office leaves the blockbuster profit at 559.6 million. This is 1.2 times its net cost, giving Disney 1.2 times return on investment. That's actually a pretty decent return on investment. Not great, but also not terrible, uh, especially for such an expensive movie. And yeah, so this is kind of showing like just a very basic idea of like how the profits, you know calculated up so how disney made 1.2 billion in profit from the star wars movies so it's showing here so this blue part of the graph is disney's box office share red is the net spending green is the net profit loss so force awakens yeah made a lot of money rogue one did pretty good last jedi you notice that it is half about of uh, what they made there. And then, hmm, you're noticing a little bit of a trend. Then Solo, Solo lost a significant amount of money. Rise of Skywalker came out and it's dismally bad compared to like what they ended up actually getting out of it. Because really, to be honest, Rise of Skywalker, they were trying to right the ship after what happened with Ryan Johnson which I will be completely honest, I highly doubt that he will ever work with Disney again. And any studio that does use him, especially Amazon, I think he's been doing uh, the Knives Out movies. Yeah, they're going to have him on a tight leash to make sure he doesn't do the same stuff that he did on this movie. Trying to do the, oh, subverting expectations. It's so, so, it's so satisfying. It's not. It's really not. Anyway, so getting a little bit, skipping a little further down. So, so likewise, the calculation does not include the results of the Lucasfilm franchises. As we've recently revealed, Disney lost $134.2 million at the box office in the latest Indiana Jones movie and Lucasfilm's streaming series based on the 1988 fantasy film Willow was canceled despite the mouse pouring more than $100 million into it. Also, let's uh, not forget the fact that it was pulled from Disney Plus after only a few weeks, and you literally cannot find it. It's been completely wiped. There are, as far as I know right now, as far as I'm aware, no physical media sales. There are no streaming sales of that series. It's just dead and gone. It was so bad. They're just like, yeah, throw it in the vault. We don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, Lucasfilm also owns Industrial Light and Magic, Visual Effects Division, though that is far smaller than its flagship franchises. So, yeah, it's... They're literally trying to explain to you that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of money that went into this entire purchase of Lucasfilm in general, not just Star Wars. And if you're just... if the, Disney is trying to hang its hat on Star Wars because, frankly, Star Wars is the only franchise that they have had in their possession that has turned a profit and even then it's not equaling out as much as they want so here's really the where the rubber meets the road let's actually get in here kind of looking at this so i mean when you're really breaking it down as forbes states that uh the actual amount, like the return on investment and everything, like as far as everything they've poured in to Star Wars compared to how much they have made from Star Wars how, compared to how much they paid for it when they initially got it. You're looking at a deficit, a deficit of $2.8 billion. So now they're saying that they are, so this is literally Disney and well, by extension, I should say Forbes exposing Disney, saying that there that Disney has bungled this franchise so badly that it is not even broken even on how much they paid for the whole of Lucasfilm, all the franchises, everything under one roof. 
that is absolutely devastating. I mean, you have got to think that Bob Iger, the Disney board, and the shareholders have got to be looking at how much they spent on this franchise versus what they've actually gotten out of it and being like, Whoa, I think I just figured something out, Beavis. <laughs> what? <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> yeah, me. It really sucks. <laughs> And let's be completely and utterly honest with ourselves here. It's not hard to see why people are leaving and why the uh, Star Wars franchises are going to continue to suck as they go forward. I mean, we literally had this entire situation with Moses Ingram after Obi-Wan Kenobi. Disney basically stoking a bunch of you know racial stuff behind the scenes. And apparently forcing Moses Ingram off of social media. Then, of course, we have the upcoming Ray Star Wars movie that is going to be helmed by director Charmin Obey Shinoi, which is completely just ignored all the other females who have ever uh, contributed anything at all, no matter how small or how incredibly huge to the Star Wars franchise as a whole. And now they're saying that it's, time that we had a woman come forward to shape the story of star wars where have you been <laughs> and then let's not even get started on ahsoka which in its at finale lost over 40 percent of its audience and yeah was a complete and utter dismal failure i mean again Andor. nobody tuned into it it actually had worse numbers than ahsoka if you can believe that and now we have to look forward to the Acolyte, which, uh, again, helmed by a showrunner, Leslie Headland, who is the former personal assistant to none other than Harvey Weinstein. Uh, yeah, that guy. And now she's saying that the Acolyte is going to be a lesbian series with a Star Wars veneer. I mean, Disney has come full circle into actually flat out becoming the Panderverse. Put a chicken in it, make her gay. Put a chicken in it, make her name it gay. Sure, yeah. Well, uh, let's try that again. I mean, <laughs> change my mind. <laughs> All right. Well, folks, I cannot get any more in depth than that as far as this current situation goes. Um, at this point, yeah, this has been definitely gone on longer of a video than I had actually intended on, but I wanted to give you a full, complete breakdown of everything that's been going on as far as that goes. Look, um, as I said, Star Wars is a dead franchise. It's going to continue to be a dead franchise. And if Disney has any sense in their heads, all they have to do to start winning back people to their side, one, and they'll never do this, I'm just saying, one, they need to release a completely restored original version of the original trilogy, 4K, and they need to do it without any of the special edition stuff, make the original theatrical cuts, release it out there on 4K, let people enjoy the Star Wars that actually they truly grew up on, shelve everything with Star Wars and Lucasfilm for at least a good five to ten years, bring in a whole bunch of new people to actually write the ship, get all this woke crap out of there, and then try to rebuild from the ground up. But this time, do it from the position, of don't piss off the fans, don't piss on the fans, and go back to the expanded universe and just completely axe and decanonize everything under, under Kathleen Kennedy. If you want 
to get Star Wars fans back into your good graces, that's how you do it. Yes, they won't do that, any of that. I'm completely aware of that. And I'll be completely honest. That's why I keep saying Star Wars is a dead franchise. And to all the haters out there who are going to sit there and, you know, tell me that uh, I'm completely wrong, I have but to say to you... So long, gay boys! All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. I will see you on the next video. Peace.